Assalamu alaikum. We resume our lecture on the brain stem. The next part is the pawns. For the pawns, we'll be doing the gross features, the nerves coming out, the cranial nerves, as well as the arterial supply, and a small mention of the clinical. And at the end, we'll then do the cross section. So as I mentioned, it is the cross section that actually come in your SAQs. So, right in front of you, on the bottom, this is the medulla that we already covered. Here is the pons. The first thing you may have noticed of the pons are these transverse lines in the front. These are actually the transverse fibers. As they go back from the front, they actually form the middle cerebellar peduncle. This is the connection between the pons and the cerebellum. The spinocerebellar fibers as well as the cuneocerebellar, they actually pass through these into the cerebellum. As a matter of fact, even the efferents from the cerebellum, they pass through these. It depends actually. Majority of the efferents are actually passing through the superior cerebellar peduncle, while the afferents, the sensory ones, they're entering through the inferior cerebral peduncle. And some of them basically pass through the middle. On the front side, covered by this basilar artery is your basilar groove and uh, aside from that there's not much else to mention on the front side it is quite large compared to the medulla and the midbrain volume wise but otherwise there are not a lot of features on the front on the back however there are numerous things to show first and foremost the pons forms the upper half of the fourth ventricle the medulla was forming the lower half and I told you on the lower side you had the hypoglossal triangle and the vagal triangle and the strimedullaris fibers which are not visible here. But at this region and I want to basically here we go it will be more clear this way. In fact I'll take out a marker just to pinpoint certain parts. Here we go. Let's use a red one. Right over here, this is where we have the facial colliculus. This is an impression being formed due to the facial nucleus. Now, the facial, actually it's better to say that it is the fibers from the facial nucleus when they coil around the abducent uh, nucleus, then they form this facial colliculus. I'll show you when uh, I make the cross section, you'll notice how they're actually different from the facial colliculus as we go upwards here we have the median eminence this is an elevation the median eminence and obviously the thing in the center will be termed as the median sulcus let's label them here for your clarity the facial colliculus the median eminence and the median sulcus. Now as the median eminence goes upwards, it meets at the center point right here. The border, the outermost border of the median eminence, that is termed as the sulcus limitans. And I'm demarcated with the green marker, like so. This is the sulcus limitans. These are the things that they will ask in the Viva, not so much in the SQ or MCQs, but their positions are still important nonetheless. Here we have the sulcus limitants. I hope I spelled that correctly. The only other notable thing to mention here is as the sulcus limitants goes upwards, there is a dark bluish area right located at this region. Not so apparent here. But this area is known as the substantia ferginosa. Now demarcated with the blue color, substantia ferginosa, right around this region. Oops. I think. Here we go. Dentia ferruginosa. Although 
the positions are off. Uh, I'll try to re reel it again, but I hope you understood that this blue is actually demarcating this region here. I'm not sure how the positions got off. Anyway, let me clear this and we can start all over. And uh, only one last thing to note is this region right over here. This is your vestibular area. And the vestibular area is actually representing the area where you have the vestibular nucleus. As a matter of fact, if we go back to the front side, you will notice that in front of the pawns, there are about one, two, three, four, actually there are five here, but uh, the fifth one is actually obscured, cranial nerve which are visible. Now, looking at the bottom side, right over here, between the border of the medulla and the pons in the front, the first nerve you see is your abducens nerve. This is a nerve which is involved with innervating the lateral rectus muscle of the eye. The abducens nerve is your sixth cranial nerve and is going to supply the eyeball. And there are two on each side. It goes directly straight in front and it enters into the superior orbital fissure to supply the lateral rectus of the eye. As you go to the right or left, depending on where you're looking, you will then come across this nerve. This is actually your facial nerve, but there's only one portion of the facial nerve. If you ever to make the branches visible, there'll be a whole lot of them and uh, it would give a distinct appearance of the face actually. But I don't want to uh, enable them right now. We're just going to focus on the main stem. The facial nerve comes out. It has the main motor fibers in it and it forms a geniculate ganglion right over here. Almost, well, the majority of the autonomic cranial nerves have a ganglion. Lossopharyngeal, vagus, the oculomotor, they all have a ganglion. And from this ganglion, then you have the main motor coming out through the stylomastoid foramen to supply the muscles of the face. Again, this is a small overview of the nerve. We're, we're going to do this in detail later on. But the point of telling you this is that whenever you have lesions with the muscles of the face, it might be that there's a lesion directly on the nerve or there might be a lesion in the central nervous system within the brain stem. So you, you need to take into account if you have a deviated eye towards the la lateral side and at the same time you also have paralyzed muscles, then you might think that somewhere near the pons region, the lower part of the pons, at the level of the facial nucleus, there might be some sort of lesion there. And the last nucleus to show is the vestibular cochlea. Now, the vestibular cochlea is actually composed of two parts. The vestibular part, which goes and supplies your saccule, utricle, and the semicircular canals, and the cochlea part, which basically takes a sensation from the cochlea. Cochlea is regarding hearing. Vestibular is regarding the balance. And the vestibular nerve is going to re... Uh, interact with your cerebellum and a lot of other fibers to form your balance. You, if you remember when we were doing the descending tracks, there was your vestibulospinal nerve, which is an extra pyramidal tract involved in facilitating your extensors to keep you standing. Then you also have your uh, vestibulospinal nerve, uh, the trapezoid body, which is basically the nerves coming from the cochlea into the pons and ascending upwards. And you'll see all of these and we'll do the cross section. But to summarize, three important nerves at the level of the facial colliculus, abducent, facial, and vestibular cochlea. And the last and most important nerve, and this is a nerve that they ask alongside facial nerve in your SQ. The top two nerves that they ask are trigeminal and facial. Your trigeminal nerve is coming from the upper part of the pons. And it's composed of two parts the main sensory, it's the one you're seeing right over here actually, and a small motor part which goes just alongside it, which is not visible. The sensory part is expanded from your trigeminal ganglion. And this ganglion is then got into three parts. Again, we're not going to go so deep in this. We'll save that for later. But this is the level of the trigeminal nucleus at this part of the pons. These are the important nerves that you need to know. Any sort of loss of sensation of face or hearing or facial paralysis or lateral rectus paralysis, think pons. To finish off, the artery. As I said, in the center you had your basilar artery. When we were doing the medulla, 
The two main supplies were from the vertebral and anterior spinal from the front and the posterior inferior cerebellar from the side. But uh, forgetting all that and coming up to this point, this is your anterior inferior cerebellar. Posterior inferior was down below, supplying medulla. The anterior inferior is supplying the lower part of the pons. So a lesion of any of these with the signs and symptoms, as I mentioned before, deviation of the eye <coughs> uh, to the medial side basically, because a lack of pull on the lateral rectus would mean that the medial rectus is pulling the eye towards the medial side. So that would mean that one of these arteries could be affected. Again, remember, normally you don't really have direct injuries to the brain stem because it is encased within your skull. It is possible with a severe traumatic injury that they are damaged, but usually it is due to a blockage or disruption of the arteries, the most common types of lesions. And that results in ischemia, uh, ischemia of the region. So the anterior inferior cerebellar is the bottom, and you have the superior cerebellar at the top. And notice, these are all arteries which are supplying the cerebellum, which is located at the back. But since they cross in front of these structures, they also supply these structures as well. So right superior cerebellar on top, anterior inferior cerebellar at the bottom. Portine branches are in the front. Now that that has been covered, let us finally go to the cross section. And for that, I'm just going to hide a lot of these structures to make. Now for the cross section. I'll be using this same area to represent both parts, the cross section at the level of facial colliculus and at the level of the trigeminal ganglion. You might have noticed this thing protruding out is actually the CSF they've shown passing through the cerebral aqueduct right over here as it goes down to the fourth ventricle. So you can just ignore that for now. Now let's start by drawing the important part. As I showed you in the last time, if you can draw the major structures, that is sufficient to get majority of the marks. First and foremost, in the front, we'll draw the transverse pontine fibers. The fibers which are crossing over in front of the pontine, in the pons, and then going into the middle cerebellar peduncle. Here we have all of these fibers passing over. And the interesting thing is, it is through these fibers that you have the passage of the corticospinal tract. So after drawing the transverse fibers, we'll draw small nuclei right over here, representing basically the, well not really, yes they are nuclei, they're known as the, cortic, uh, the bulbar nuclei. The corticospinal, as they're descending, the spinal will go into the spinal cord, but some fibers will then synapse here the bulbar part, corticobulbar fibers. It is from here that then they will go into the facial colliculus for synapsing. As since there are a lot of muscles in your face which are involved in five mo fine movement, so those fibers will be innervated by the corticobulbar tract. And keep in mind these are the upper motor neurons. Facial nerve itself and all the things it innervates, that is a lower motor neuron. Here you have your corticospinal and the corticobulbar tract. Let's label them right here. Corticospinal and corticobulbar. Okay. Now, in the black, we label it as the transverse fibers. Transverse fibers. The third thing to draw, as I said, since you have two different levels, you need to draw either the trigeminal nucleus on top, if you're drawing the top section, or the facial uh, nucleus and abducens at the bottom. Let's start with the one at the bottom and let us draw the <coughs> facial nucleus right over here. Now this nucleus, as I said, wraps around another nucleus before exiting out on the side, like so. And the nucleus it's wrapping around actually is the abducen. The abducen on the other hand will straight pass out in front linearly. They won't curve like the facial nucleus. And this curve is actually the thing that is responsible for the facial colliculus at the back. So here you have the two nuclei. You have your 
facial nerve coming from the facial nuclei and the abducent one right in front. To the side, we'll draw the vestibular. Because if you remember, the vestibular was lying just alongside the facial nerve. We'll just draw a vestibular nucleus here, and it's coming out on its own right over here. The vestibular nuclei. Remember, the vestibular nuclei is quite large. It has four parts that extend into the medulla, but we're looking at the topmost largest part. So here's your vestibular nuclei and nerve. Obviously, you can see the peduncles there. So just to demarcate them, we're just going to give them a bit of a color here. At the level where I'm drawing, at the facial, obviously these would be then the inferior. But if I were drawing the level at trigeminal uh, nerve, that would be then the superior cerebellar peduncle. So here we have the inferior cerebellar peduncle. There we go. To finish off, you can also label this region the cerebral aqueduct region. There are a few other small minor points to mention. So for the sake of completion, if you've drawn this much, you've got the majority of the marks, three or four definitely. But if you want to go the extra mile, the last thing to draw is this. Draw a leaf-like shape here and here. This represents the medial lemniscus, which is actually a grouping of the dorsal column tract, the same one involved with fine touch proprioception. So you have one leaf-like structure here and one leaf-like structure here. And the fibers in between, they are known as the trapezoid body. I'm just going to make them like this, crosses. This is your trapezoid body. And let us label them. Trapezoid is involved with the cochlear nerve and its pathway. While the... Oh, here we go. While the pink you see here is the medial lemniscus. Medial lemniscus. And I shall move that so they can see it clearly. There we go. And you've done that much, it's small enough. There's also one more structure, medial longitudinal fasciculus, located right over here in front of the cerebral aqueduct. But we'll skip that for now. The only difference between this and at the top region is that I said replace inferior cerebral peduncle with superior cerebral peduncle, remove these facial, abducent, and the vestibular nuclei. And then we'll just replace them with the trigeminal motor part and the sensory part. Just for the sake of completion, and I know I made a mess here, but no worries. Here we go. You just draw one trigeminal nucleus, the motor part, and its sensory part right beside it and they are both exiting outside. That is only the main difference. The rest of the things are the same. And next time we will cover the midbrain.